Okay, this here shows the uh, our diagram that we're using for programming. Uh, we'll show the program just a little bit. Um, and the, the thing that I'm working through now is basically, I guess I got the layout all laid out. Um, you can see three lines here. A goes down to A, so you come out of the yard here, then you go down through Wallace Junction, then you come up through Lake City, CP97, into Pittsfield, and back around. It's just a big circle, basically. Um, so when you start programming, and what we're going to have is it's what we're calling poor man's CTC, uh, because mostly it's just Steve and I down there, and we're not going to have the dispatcher manned. I think at a later date, I'll make a, a program version allowing full dispatcher uh, control. But what we're going to have is basically it's going to be set up so all the interlockings and all these signals are all going to be red until a train, for example, let's see, we're looking here at this signal right here. Until a train comes into the block this way, then that signal, if permissible, will go to clear um, or whatever I tell it to do based on the program. So that's what I'm doing now is, is kind of going through uh, each of these and you have to figure out for each signal how you want it to react uh, based on how turnouts are thrown uh, and whatnot. So for example, for this signal here, this first signal, obviously if SM1 is turnout reverse, that signal stays red. Obviously, you're not going to clear it. Um, and then we go on and say, okay, if, if this turnout is, if SM3 is reverse, what do I do? How do I program this signal? So we'll take a look at, uh, at the code real quick. Again, I'm not going to go into this into real detail, but uh, this is our overall uh, railroad here, the diagram that we're using to, to program. Uh, these are direction of traffic uh, variables that basically tell me do I have a train you know, cleared or moving this way, eastbound in the block, or westbound in the block. And these are all the, dire the direction of traffic variables that we're using for the layout. So let's go over and take a quick look at the program. All right, so here's a sample of the program that we're using, and I did not start this myself. I got it out of the uh, the CD that comes with the CMRI manuals. Um, and again, this is a visual, it's a, we're using Visual Basic 6 uh, on a computer run in uh, Windows XP. And uh, this is going to be basically poor man CTC. Like I said, I'm starting with a default, and I'm kind of modifying things as, as I go through it. Um, so this is the main form. And again, I won't walk through everything here, but you have to set up your, your different uh, constants. You have to set up your signal constants. So it, it, this actually tells, um, it makes it a little bit easier as, as opposed to having to write the actual uh, number here. You just kind of say the signal equals red, red, or red, dark, or something like that. Um, I'm going to have flash. So this is a flash counter to flash signals. Then it goes through all the initializing, all of the, the S mini and the Sussex nodes. Um, that's all pretty generic stuff. Then you start the real time loop. Then this is where the actual program starts looping through. Um, you have to go through and you have to basically unpack all the inputs. So these are all the inputs that came in, mostly block detectors. But in our case also, we're going to have switch machine. Uh, for example, SM4 MH is that switch machine in manual or hand mode. Uh, this one here is, is switch machine 7 locked or unlocked. And then this is the feedback because on all these you need to know the, the position of the turnout. Especially for the poor man CTC, you have to know the position of the turnout to tell the signal what to do. So uh, we had to go through and actually I had, I had to redo all that. But this just goes through and reads all the different inputs. Um, if I did this right, <laughs> can I just copy the example and walk through it? Um, I went through here. We have a couple blocks that are split up for the um, road crossing into sub blocks. Uh, but for occupancy, you need to know the whole. So block 9 is, you know, 9A or 9B. Just saying that, you know, if, if block 9 is occupied, it, if either of these two is occupied. That's all we're doing there. Um, direction of traffic, I haven't gone through and done this yet. I have to redo it with R's. Um, but I, I started it out. And then you can see I have remarks that I need to fill this in as I go through. And then the hard part, at least for me, is the signal calculations. So you can see I tried to work through... Uh, the first signal, um, which is, uh, let's see if this works here, which is this signal right here, uh, signal EE, -E, Eugene East, 1 East, that's what we're doing right now. So you can go through and you say, okay, basically if the OS is occupied, you jump to the next signal, 
if SM1 is turn out reverse again like I said because if that's reverse you're not going to clear that signal so jump down to the next one and then I got into how to determine what to do if it's um, if you want to be cleared now basically you start with the most restrictive uh, signal indication so you always start red red um, and then you work down and clear the signal or well it, no, actually you start down what conditions will not change that that will keep it red and then what makes it you know more permissive um, and try to walk down through it so I think I did this right I'm not sure um, but basically then I said okay if SM3 is turn out reverse and signal EE2W is not red red so I'm saying if so imagine there's a train sitting here this is reverse and this signal is not red red um, that means see it's not red red so that means that it's cleared so that means that if this signal is not red red it's cleared for a train to come this way so that signal would stay red red and then if it's if it is turn out normal and the direction of traffic for block six is not westbound <laughs> and this is the direction of traffic here for this block so if this turnouts reverse and this direction of traffic is not westbound so it means I'm not cleared for a train coming this way then this signal can clear and the way we're gonna do it is with this flash statement and that's what this is right here what that's gonna do basically is say you set the signal to red green and this flash counter alternates back and forth so it alternates between red green and red dark so when that happens it'll be basically red over flashing green meaning that you're clear to come out um, and then what I want to do now is jump to the next signal so I don't, I'm not sure this is going to work or not but so then I put a go to here to come down to the next signal and then if you fail all of these and then basically it means now that the, that this turnout is normal so you're sitting here wanting to go straight basically and if it's clear and the direction of travel for block five and I see I have an error there uh, this block is not set you can clear the train to go this way so then it will then say um, okay so make that signal now green over red and then end and go to the next signal I think because I'm not really sure about all this I gotta try it and now uh, get it hooked up do the best I can with the code and then try running it and see what happens I'm sure I'll have errors as we go through it or it won't act the way we think it will I have to come back in here and tweak this a little bit uh, so I'm kind of dusting off my basic uh, coding and, and going through it so I've only done a couple signals and I just have placeholders for all the rest of them and then you gotta go through and calculate all the intermediate signals and these aren't right I have to go through and do all this these are all, all the intermediates which are basically 94 is an intermediate right here and 103 is an intermediate right here and they'll just be set for the most part based on the occupancy of the blocks approaching them um, or on, on, on the other side of them as well so then you can do all that and then we have to set um, direction of traffics uh, yeah, th this right here is kind of the poor man CTC this is setting all the signals to be um, red red at the interlockings um, and then I have approach lighting uh, so basically what we're going to do is very similar to the CSX around us is if the for the intermediate actually for all signals even their uh, interlocking signals are approach lit so basically this says if the if the block approaching for example signal 94 1 east is is clear then the signal will be dark so it'll be dark until a train hits the block then they'll turn on based on the indications up above um, so then you go through and you have to pack all your outputs basically this goes through uh, for each of the nodes and just writes all the outputs out to the railroad set, telling it what to do with the signals and whatnot and then it goes back and starts to loop all over again um, so that's pretty much it so the biggest thing that we gotta do now you can see a lot of the program is pretty much set for us we have the inputs and outputs set. The biggest thing now is to go through and calculate the signals um, and make sure I have the directions of traffic correct and everything so that it's going to be automatic operation. So, you know, Steve and I can just fire up trains and run them. 
all these signals will be read. Um, so, for example, if, if, if Steve brings a train out of the class yard, at, yeah, let's say, and all the signals are going to be read, so he'll throw this switch, and we'll put it into hand mode, obviously, um, and then we'll feed back, and it'll know that it's in hand, and then we'll throw that turn out, and he'll bring a train out. Once he comes into this interlocking here, th this signal will clear if it can. Um, so he'll bring his train out once he comes into the block here, this signal will then clear. So it's not the dispatcher doing it, and it's not perfect, but at least we can run trains and have the signals doing something. Um, you know, so for example, if he came out with, with a train here, and this signal was clear, and he's moving along here on the block, and I come in here and I throw this turn out, this one right here, SM14, to go reverse, that signal will drop to red. Because um, obviously it won't be red, so I'll have to come up here and stop and say, hey, what'd you do to me? Um, so at least it'll do something. It won't be perfect, but it will provide uh, somewhat realistic signal operation, um, you know, based on what's happening. Um, and then, like I said, the, all the intermediates will be approach lit, and um, we're going to try it. We'll see how it works. Uh, it'll, it'll give us something, because we just don't have the, you know, with only really two of us, to actually man the dispatcher station would be kind of hard to do. I think, like I said, at some point we will do it um, with a visual display and everything, very similar to something like this. I actually have it written up where it'll show the diagram, and then you can come in here as a dispatcher, and you can clear signals and throw turnouts and stuff, um, which is actually a lot easier because then basically these signals just stay red until I clear them as a dispatcher, um, if I can. Um, you know, for example, if this signal was reversed, I could not clear this signal as a dispatcher. But... All right, one of the things we had to modify, uh, you just saw us a little bit of snip there on the uh, the programming that we're doing, and the programming for the poor man CTC, which is basically, you know, call it automatic signal operation based on relatively prototype uh, considerations uh, with no active dispatcher. That's kind of what it is. Um, part of that, you, you need to have feedback of the turnout positions. This diagram is what we do have set up, um, this basically allows you to have a turnout in motor, uh, which is controlled uh, then by the by the computer or dispatcher if it's manned, or if you go up into hand, um, it opens up this this input line which tells the computer that it's now in hand operation, which drives some certain things, and there's an optional feedback off of here, which you see I had hatched out, um, which is a feedback to another input to give the actual position of the turnout itself. Now initially I didn't think I needed that until I got into the programming and I said, well wait a minute, I, I, I have to have that. So I had to go back and add to all the turnouts, um, most of the turnouts in the layout, add this back in, which wasn't that big a deal. Uh, this card, the SMC12 card, is accessible uh, either behind the layout for the panels or in the actual panel itself. But I had to run all these back to uh, the appropriate uh, node and since my inputs were full I had to swap some things around and, and move some stuff around so basically for example for Wallace Junction here I had to actually uh, run it from here all the way around underneath the layout and I had to go back and run it to the node that's up under the yard over there just because the inputs um, on the closest were all full uh, so, had to do all that. That took a little bit of a while. I mean, for example, for over there at 97, I had to run them all the way back around the wall there and all the way back to the node that sits up under there, under uh, Pittsfield, where the factor's going to be. So, a little bit of work. Took a, a Saturday night, and then I finished it up this morning. Uh, but you need to have that for the, uh, for the poor man's CTC. You need that feedback because a lot of the conditions... Uh, in the interlockings are set on the turnout positions. And like I said, for poor man CTC, uh, as an example, you know, this signal here, I'm sorry, um, you know, let's assume a train comes out of the yard there, uh, he comes up, he crosses over, he, he comes across here into this block. Um, it then will set this signal here, which is the next control point. This signal will then clear uh, whatever indication it should. Um, otherwise it'll be red red basically until a train comes into this block then this signal will clear based on you know turnout or turnout positions and block occupancy ahead of it and all that kind of stuff 
So that's pretty much what we mean. So basically, all the signals are red until a train comes into the block, approaching it, and then the signal will change state. Again, not perfect. Um, you know, in some cases, you, you might say, oh, that's kind of silly, but at least it's, it's something. Uh, and, and that's for operation without a, a dispatcher. So uh, that was one thing that we had to do, uh, running all those cables back, but it wasn't too difficult. So we got all that done. Uh, so that will tie into the programming that we showed you previously. All right, it's a quick note on the signal bridge. Um, something interesting. Um, got it all hooked up here and again, testing it all and everything works fine. And what I thought I would do is um, I mark the leads and the way we're finding the mark them is I find the red lead and use a red sharpie and I can actually mark it. Uh, you probably never be able to see it here, but you can actually see it so I know what the red one is. And I don't have a green, so I'm just using a black sharpie and I'll mark the green with a little bit of strip of black. And actually it works fairly well. You can see it on the layout. So okay, so got them all marked up. This one right here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There's a tiny, tiny little black dot. Um, because this is the bottom. So this here, this lead, is the bottom head on this side. So now I know, okay, I go over and hook it up. This goes to the bottom, and this goes to the top. Cool. <clears throat> so then I come over to here. So, hmm. All right, BLMA being a good manufacturer, probably some logic to this. These two here are probably the left or the two bottoms. I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, not quite. Um, these two here <laughs> are actually the top left and the bottom middle. And the bottom ones down here are actually the, the top middle and the bottom left. And why that is, I have no idea. Um, and he, here it is hooked up, and I could show you that. Here's, I have these two hooked up right here. And if I test <clears throat> one of them, I get the right there, that red there. Again, this is a little difficult to do with one hand. Tell you what, let me grab this one here. This will be the green. Okay. Top middle. The other cable oh bottom left how nice um so you have no idea well <laughs> so i was hoping again you got underneath the layout and this one because you know what which leads these are would be you said either these two or these two but no they're not there so you have no idea what they are when you get under there so you have to test them which in reality you have to test them anyway because even if i knew these two were these two say the two bottom ones here I'm still going to have to test them to find out which one's which. And that's just, there's some way to mark them. <clears throat> which I guess you could, if it had a separate color, you probably could mark the end with a, a green or a purple or something that would show up. But uh, I just thought that was interesting. Um, there's no pattern to this, so I don't know why this, these two leads are, you know, the <laughs> cat quarter singles. I really don't know why. But uh, I thought it was interesting. But other than that, it's tested, so we'll get it installed and try to get some colors on this one too. All right, got the signal bridge working. Um, again, it's just kind of lit up now to see what it looks like. Um, and the one thing I'm not sure what I'm going to do here on the intermodal track lead, which is the, the far right uh, far right track here. Uh, you can see now I have it yellow over yellow. I'm not really sure uh, what that should be. Maybe some prototype or some real railroad guys out there might know what it is because you can see pretty much what it is. Yellow, yellow, I'm saying that means that, um, you know, that this turnout is a line normal. So you have the switch lead there, so you can do switching moves uh, out of the intermodal yard. Um, I, I guess it could be red over yellow, but really that yellow would be for a diverging route, so I, I don't know what to make it. So you know what I mean? So it could be yellow over red, um, but to me that just, I don't know, I, I just think yellow, yellow looks a little bit cooler. Um, and then when this turnout here gets thrown uh, to go out, again, based on, like we talked about in the previous segment, some of the conditions, this signal, um, if it's clear to go out, and he's actually a train waiting to go out, will go red over flashing yellow. Um, now, if it's thrown and a train comes into the block and you're just going to come in here, this signal will be red over red. Um, and then these, again, these are the ones I showed. This right here, uh, the last segment, this, this is, uh, you know, signal Eugene East, 1 East. That's the signal right there, uh, the one I was talking about. And you can see, you know, you got turnouts to worry about. 
you know, the, the position of this turnout, this crossover affects the indication uh, or the aspect of this particular signal here. So got to work through that. Again, I'm not really sure what to make this signal. I can make it whatever I want it. I can make it green over green if I want to. Um, so I, I'm not sure. Any, any comments on that are, are, are welcome, you know, what that signal might be when it's lined straight. Again, for when you have permission to use a switch, because you're not going to call a dispatcher every time you want to use this lead uh, for headroom for switching. Uh, so it's got to be some indication. But for now, it's yellow, yellow. So that uh, was also done. You got that accomplished as well. And we've got a new uh, new roster made here. Uh, this came in was a real good sale at uh, Euro Model Trains. This is a Swiss uh, RE66. I've always liked the green livery. Uh, so I finally picked one up. I have several uh, different locomotives in, in the red and the cargo, but not the green. So this was a pretty good price, so I went ahead and picked it up. Uh, not that I really needed it, but uh, story of my life. But I really, I really like this locomotive. And you can see I made a short little train there. I was running it one night just to have some fun. So nice. This is a Roco model. Um, relatively new one, DCC sound. So maybe we'll give it a run and... Uh, Wrap this video up here for the week with uh, some running.